Welcome back to Morning Express. It's time for us to look at your money. And this morning, we'd like to look at, uh, well, so what we do as a career and how some of us end up there. And to have that conversation with me is Mwenesi Musalia, who is a lead trainer and also an image consultant. And he's from House of Major. Good morning and uh, thank you for joining us this thank morning. Thank you, Michael. Now, career is one of those things that uh, one probably dreams about and uh, is likely to change even as life goes on. Uh, how do we end up settling on certain careers? Maybe from your experience, how do people end up settling on careers? The traditional education system that you know, we've gone through and our parents have gone through have charted a path for us and made, and made sure that if you study a certain uh, degree or, or you go down a certain education path, then you should end up um, um, pursuing that, uh, that, job, that job spec. Mm -hmm. However, with, with times changing and with information becoming more available and with the internet becoming more prevalent, uh, you find that a lot of people now have options, which is something that we didn't have 15, 20 years ago. True. Um, and now the ability to explore your inner strengths and your passions, you'll find that a lot of people, um, although they're very passionate about doing something, mm -hmm. the pressure um, to, to go into a line that either your parents want you to go into or um, because of lack of finances, you, you settle for, for any job uh, that, that, that comes your way the first time, even though you wanted to go in a different direction. There are a lot of different pressures um, that make people um, go into certain careers. And once you're there, because you have to pay bills and you're, you're, you're stuck to a rush cycle, in this cycle, cycle. exactly, mm -hmm. um, you, 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 that creative desire to follow your ambitions and your, and your passions and what you truly want to do as a person um, gets put to the side. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, however, there is, um, like I said, with the internet, uh, a lot more opportunity for people to now start to think, you know, what Outside can I the do? Box. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you'll find that majority of people, just like you've mentioned, sometimes end up in a career for two reasons. Either you were pushed into it, uh, whether by your parents, or the fact that maybe it looked very rosy. And uh, there are others who possibly, out of circumstances, maybe you end up getting uh, Kibarua somewhere. That ends up becoming your permanent job. Now, is it possible or how easy is it for somebody to change career once you get into one? Um, before, it was very difficult for you to change your career because... Um, the access to information that we have now um, was was not as as high. Um, nowadays, you know, there's with a lot more integration with social media, with people being able to see how other people are are doing in their lives and and uh, the 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 things that they're pursuing. Many people are starting to think, you know, I actually wanted to do that when when at, at some point, mm. but then because I got into this job and I got stuck. Um, I wasn't I wasn't able to fully to fully realize my dream, but I see that so and so is is pursuing their their dream. Maybe I should also try. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more confidence that people are getting now by seeing their peers and people on social media um, uh, pursuing their dreams. And because we've become more interconnected and closer as 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 a society, uh, the the. It, it, is, it is less of an issue now um, switching careers than it was, say, 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely. And uh, we'll come to how we settle on careers and maybe how we should settle. Because there's a difference between how we settle and how we should settle on certain careers. But for those of us who are watching and maybe you'd like to participate, feel free. We'll open up the phone lines now in case you have a question from, from Musalia in regards to career. Because I know career is a thing that many of us struggle with, sometimes even to the point of retirement. Some have actually not done what they would desire to do. But we went out and about asking questions and finding out why people do what they do and possibly if they would want a change. And here is some of what we gathered. And uh, we'll come back to Musalia just to see how we should settle on a career. But this is what we gathered. This is what I am comfortable with. I am comfortable with the way that I am na kukutetea wanyonge na kutetea vijana na kukutetea kina mama kwa kazi zao tunataka tufanye kazi kama serikali ambayo inashughulikia ina vijana ambayo inashughulikia kina mama ambayo inashughulikia watu ambao uh, with disability mimi uh, mimi kabisa ni nahisi kwamba ningekuwa ninawakilisha watu ambayo uh, wa, 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 wale wanyonge ambao wapati ile nafasi ya kuongea mimi ninataka nikue ule tu mwenye nitakuwa ninaenda pale wananiambia shida zao ninaenda kusulu uh, tunaenda tunasema alafu baadaye tunarudi kusuluhisha je unafurahia hiyo kazi ambayo uko nayo walikutrain na kama walikutrain mbona umebaki na hiyo kazi na kama unaenjoy hiyo kazi first of all first of all uh, we underwent seven years in university, and our job is to save lives. 
There is what we call free primary education. And we and there is nothing like all free medical education. So do you enjoy your work? We we are not enjoying our work, we are just doing free. So we need our our job. So you are trained like in you don't We are trained well but then and we do service for free. And yet there are people who are running for free. And MCA is getting more money than us. So you don't and even we when there is an ambulance, it is us who are called. So you don't enjoy? So we are not enjoying, we need our money. Me, na, me, kazi ya nyanafanya, ni, ni na enjoy because ni kazi ya nyami mwenye ni lipenda kutokea ni kewa mdogo. Na hiyo ndiyo ni litrainia. Yeah. So why are you stuck? Sababu ni napenda hiyo kazi. Kasema, ni mekuma na hiyo kazi kwa sababu napenda? Eh, sababu napenda. Ni mekuma na hiyo kazi maana ni naipenda, inanilisha, inanichungia watoto. All right, and quite a variety of uh, different aspects to what people do and how they view it. We have the first gentleman who says for him he would like to help. Uh, he would like to help the less fortunate. Let's look at how does one settle on a career? What should be the motivating factors? You know, it's a combination of things, Michael. Um, there's what you're naturally good at. There's what you, as growing up, growing up as a child, you would gravitate towards. Some people will be more scientific in their thinking. Some people will be more artistic. Some people will like numbers. Some people will like words. So you move in the direction that is most natural to you. However, you know, when you, when you get into the real world, after you've finished your studies, whether it's at university or even in high school, and you get into the working world and you start earning a bit of money, the pressure to pay bills sometimes becomes more than um, what you what you naturally uh, would like to do. I mean, you know, when you ask a child when they're when they're young, what do you want to be when you grow up? What they what that child answered versus 10, 15 years later when they're an yeah, adult. Two worlds apart. Two complete worlds apart. Mm. Um, uh, there's a, there's a quote that I love, and it and it applies to me especially because I I I trained as a lawyer. I'm uh, and and I went into business, and then I went into public relations, and now I'm in I'm in education. I'm in adult training. Um, and, and that trajectory is something that um, I realized when I, I allude to this quote, uh, the two most important days in a man's life is the day that he's born and the day that he understands why. And understanding your why, looking into yourself to, to figure out what am I put on this earth for? What is my purpose? What is my calling? What is the thing that, that I'm supposed to do with myself? That is something that a lot of people, not just Kenyans, but the world over, struggle with. Um, and you settle. You settle for, for anything that pays the bills. You settle for anything that um, looks um, uh, cool or, or, or what we term social capital. It's something that you want to tell your, your friends or your family about. I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer. Um, but you don't actually have the passion for it. And the enjoy, you don't feel the enjoyment to actually do what you absolutely, do. Absolutely, absolutely. And you'll find that a lot of people have a, amazing talents and skills, which if they would just pursue it without the fear of, is this going to make me money? Is this going to make me successful? Is the, is the, the, the urge and the desire to make money and to look um, good in front of my friends more than my, my, my passion? Mm -hmm. You find that the people who are actually pursuing their passion are the ones who eventually become very successful. And you find that for them, going to work is not really going to work because they're doing what they love to do anyway. To actually do Absolutely. You You're being do. paid to do what you love to do. And that is the ideal situation for everybody. So I encourage people um, as much as possible, even if you're in that job that you hate and you're in a situation that you don't like, look inside yourself. And that's something that a lot of people fail to do. You fail to sit down quietly and think, what is it that I am put on this earth to mm. do? So, okay. Now, there's something you've mentioned here, and that's finding the why. And looking at the third gentleman who was interviewed there, there's an aspect of comparison, which probably lands us in trouble in terms of looking for a career. Because his statement was, MCAs are earning a lot more uh, compared to him who has gone through medical training and is not being paid. And of course, there, the issue is not so much uh, what he is doing, but the fact that he thinks if I was an MC, I'd earn more. How do we go about finding the why so that we stop this comparison game? Because at the end of the day, it's not so much how much you earn, but how much uh, you give towards what you do that brings it back. It's about value, Michael. Value is what gets you paid. If you're providing value, whatever it is, someone will find it within themselves to reward you for that value or to remunerate you. And if you use the comparative 
situation like that gentleman um, did in terms of looking at other people and saying, you know, this person did this, I've done this, why am I getting less than, than, than this other person? The question should be, what value are you providing to society and to the people that are around you that necessitates them to look, to look within their resources and find space for you and actually pay you. Mm -hmm. So if you're, not, if, you don't, if you're not providing value, whether you're an employee, whether you're a, whether you're a worker, whether you're working in the pr private sector or the public sector, or even as an entrepreneur, you must always ask yourself what value, and value is something that you should be able to quantify, even as yourself. If you put yourself in the, in the, in the, in the shoes of your customer or your, or your boss, always ask yourself, what am I doing that is making this person appreciate my effort, and what can I do more to get them to, to reach into their pocket to pay me? And that's a value question. Okay, now that's a value question, but how do I found, find my why? You talked about two important days. One is when you're born, and two, when you discover why you were born. How do I find, find that why? Um, there are different ways. Um, one way that I've found that is quite useful is to, to, to take time quiet time. And you know, in, in this day and age where we have so many distractions, mm -hmm. we have the internet, we have our phones, we have uh, work that we need to get done, there's very little time for people to, to look inward, to introspect, mm -hmm. to think about what it is that they're supposed to do. Um, and finding that quiet time, I mean, some people call it meditation, some people um, call it, um, you know, uh, prayer or whatever it is, but looking for that quiet time to look inside yourself and, and really, really start to question um, you know, what your purpose is. That's one way. Another way is to speak to a mentor. And, and mentorship or apprenticeship, as they used to call it um, those days, is something which um, people are taking for granted, but I think it's coming back in, into style. And a mentor is someone who you don't necessarily look up to as a role model, but someone who you feel can, can guide you in terms of making certain decisions based on your strengths. Because sometimes you might not know that you're good at something until someone actually points it out and keeps encouraging that thing inside you to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so mentorship, seeking, seeking mentorship, and, and a lot of young people nowadays, I would encourage them to find mentors and people who would be willing to, without, without having to be paid, guide you through the, the process of finding out what are you strong at, what are you good at, and if I was, if I was to employ you, why would I actually take the time to employ. It's not about CVs anymore, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's not about really what you've, what you've studied, but what are you bringing to my table? As an employer, I want to know how are you helping me get to the next level. Mm -hmm. As a customer, I want to know what value are you giving to me to make me buy I'm your buy product or your service. Your Absolutely. Okay, now we've talked about um, ending up <clears> in careers that possibly may not be what you dreamt of doing, but because of paying the bills, you end up stuck there. Yes. How does one move from there to now actually doing what is your passion? Because again, at the end of the day, you are not going to be irresponsible and walk out on a job, yet you still have to pay your rent and pay bills. Two things, I think. The first is, is proper financial planning. Before you, before you go out on and what most people call um, a leap of faith to, to pursue your passion. You need to be able to be at least secure within, within your financial situation and make sure that for, the, for at least three months, you should be able to pay your, yourself um, and, you, and to cover your expenses, things like rent, food, shelter, communication, um, and so on three months in advance and have enough of a buffer. You know, a lot of people talk about savings, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't just save for the sake of saving. You need to save for, for a reason. So you need to have a goal. You need to have a goal. And, and, and the biggest goal for me, if you're pursuing your passion, is to make sure that for at least the next three, possibly even six months, I should have enough money to keep me afloat such that if I do go out and I start doing the thing that I want to do um, and it doesn't pay off immediately, at least I'll be able to, to make ends meet up to, to, up to a certain point. Um, that, takes, that takes time. And there are different courses and trainings that you can, that you can go through in terms of financial planning and management to keep you um, uh, buffered when you want to pursue your passion. But there is, no, there is no substitute for that leap of faith. And you'll find that the people who are now making it in life seriously making it, where you see someone is walking with a spring in their step and, and they're, they're doing what, you, you know, it's different when you're, when, you're, when you're working because you're being forced to work or, you're, or circumstances are pressuring you to work versus working with joy in your heart. Mm. And when you work with joy in your heart, it doesn't feel like work and you, you end up being more productive, more successful than the person who is, who is being forced to do it. Mm. And, and that way the money starts to come much, much quicker um, if, you, if you're doing the thing that you actually love. So the thing is just to jump. Just take that leap of faith, 
pursue it and... It, and is and, is and there ever a right time to actually say this is it? Because if you look at it, there's, uh, we're never comfortable enough to say that, fine, now I've got everything lined up, I've got my ducks in a row, it's time for me now to make this jump. Everything is set. I wouldn't say that there's a right time. The time to do it is the time that you have now. Um, if you, I remember my own situation two years ago um, where you, 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 you start to question really what, what is it that you're supposed to do. And, you've been, and, and I was very fortunate in that I'd had um, two amazing um, employed, um, employment um, jobs, opportunities. opportunities. And you know, I, I looked at the, at the network of people that I had at my disposal. I looked at my own strengths and, and what, I, what I enjoy doing. And I said to myself, you know, if, if, I, if I don't do this now, if I don't go out and, and, and try and do something for myself, at least try. If, you, if I don't try, you'll never know until you try. Mm. And, and when, I, when I made the leap two years ago, I look back and I ask myself, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> why you didn't? You and know? that seems to always be the um, declaration of anybody who does that. You always wonder why didn't I do this before? Absolutely. And so you have to, whenever, whenever, the, whenever you start feeling the urge, in my opinion, that is the time. You know, the, the universe speaks to you. And you have to listen to what the universe is saying. And so if the universe keeps, you keep getting that nagging feeling that, you know what, people keep telling me. Um, they keep coming to me for advice on, on certain things. They keep telling me, you know what, you're really good at this. If you hear it from one person, two people, if you hear it from ten people, the same thing, that's, that's the universe telling you that maybe this is what you need to be doing. Um, because it's something that comes to you naturally. And, 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 and the way the world works is that you cannot force things to grow. You cannot force a seed to germinate into a tree. You cannot force uh, um, a, a baby to just um, become an adult. Everything takes time. But the, the, the call, the urge that you start to feel when people start asking you, you know, maybe, you're, maybe you should actually pursue this thing. Mm -hmm. Listen to that voice. Okay. Now, uh, it always sounds very nice and very easy when you talk about it now. What are some of the challenges you had to go through? <laughs> Hearing no a lot. <laughs> you know, um, you believe it. You have, you have the, the faith, the passion, and the desire. And, and in your mind, you know you absolutely can do, can do the thing that you believe you can do and that you're born, you're born on this earth to do. But sometimes people get caught up in listening to their own hype and believing their own hype that when they go out to the world and they're so, ex so energized and they want, to, they want to share everything that they have with the world, um, the world is not... The world is not there for you, right? Um, and you're going to hear no a lot. You will hear, you will knock on doors, you will be turned down, you will be rejected. But there will be those times where you hear yes that validate the reason why you, put, you decided to do this in the first place. Mm -hmm. And chasing the yes becomes, it becomes like a high. You become, you become addicted to, to hearing yes. In the midst of all the no's, you should be able to drown out those voices and, and ruthlessly pursue hearing yes. Because the more you, you hear yes, the more you perfect your craft. You perfect what you do. When I look back on, on when I started my, my, you know, my, my public relations and, and my image consulting work, um, when I started off, you know, I, I, had, I had no idea what, what, what I was doing. I was, it's just something that I knew I wanted to do. Um, and now, um, people are, are coming to me as a reference point because I've just been in their faces that so, for so long mm. that it's, it's kind of stuck. It begins to pay off. It begins to pay off. Mm. And, 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 and the trick is not to let the no's discourage you, not to give up hope, not to lose faith uh, and think that this was a bad idea because when the, yes starts, when the yeses start to come, um, build on that. Make sure that you do not, you do not let yourself um, uh, get bogged down by, by negativity. Being positive is one of the, is one of the biggest things um, that you can do for yourself in your career, irrespective. And it radiates. Most people will, will want to deal with someone who is positive, um, as opposed to someone who is always down and, and, and depressed. Negative and always. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you would find that um, successful people and the people who get paid um, are those who are always upbeat and, and positive, even in the face of adversity. Mm -hmm. and, that, and being able to, to, to be positive means pursuing a goal and knowing that the rest of this is just noise. All right. Now, one of the biggest motivation factors we'll all admit is money. Yes. Is it always, uh, always uh, about money? Um, no, it shouldn't be always about money. And this is one of the things, you know, in, in terms of some of the trainings that we give, is that the money comes, but it only comes once you have figured out what you're good at, what your strengths are, and what value you're actually providing. If you're not providing value, no one is going to pay you for it. 
Um, and, and, and the mistake that many people make, and especially, especially us Kenyans who, you know, you want to do one job, but then you've got like two or three or even five different side hustles, as mm. they call it. <laughs> um, and, and you're doing it just so that you can try and grow your, your financial base. You, you, cannot, you cannot cheat yourself and you cannot cheat others. It comes out eventually. People will, will eventually learn that you know this thing that you this deal that you've done for me, or this this side hustle that that you th that you thought was a good idea to do for me. I can't really rely on you because you've got these other things going on. So you're not quite dependable, mm. and value comes from being dependable. So you 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 have to first pursue your passion, figure out what exactly it is that you're good at and what actually provides value to the people that are around you, and then the money comes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, losing, losing sight of, of the three-month buffer that I, that I talked about should never happen. Even when you start making a bit of money from your passion, never lose sight of the fact that you still need to be able to have enough money in case things, things don't work out for, for a period to make sure that you're able to survive um, for those three months. For, so that for, for the hard times for that the come. Hard, for the hard times that Now, come. I've always heard this, and uh, of course, there's some who might be wondering, OK, fine, I would really love to have a buffer. It's a brilliant idea. It sounds good on paper. It sounds like it's you know almost uh, a romantic thought, as it were. But when you look at it practically, it might be a different scenario altogether. Maybe somebody is earning 15000 for example. Right. Uh, they have to pay rent. They have to have transport. They have to eat. They still need to dress at the end of the day. Where are they going to get this extra money to have that buffer? Excellent point. And there's, there's a book that I read um, when I was in, in university, actually. And it had a profound impact on how I handle money and, and the things that I do. Um, um, besides, besides the spiritual and religious aspect, this book um, really, really, really stuck with me. It's called The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, I've read the book. Brilliant book. Brilliant book. And you know, it talks about segmenting your, your money mm. in, in a way that you start to depend on um, if you if you to take your if you to take your total earnings, you say that fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Take that fifteen thousand shillings, cut it up into ten parts. Make sure that you dedicate seven of those parts and live within the means of the seven. And then the three that are remaining, take two of them and put them aside and use those as your investment channels. And the one that is left, you take that and you put it as your savings for the rainy day that we've been talking about. And if you get into that habit. Whether it's, the, whether it's the wages that you earn or from the side hustle that you pick up, take every bit of, 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 of money that you have, cut it up into 10, and learn to live off seven. That, is, that, is, that takes a bit of discipline. It takes a bit of um, practice. Of practice. Mm. But eventually, once you figure it out, you'll you look back after six months to a year, and then you realize, you know what, I have, I have all this money with me. Let me actually, and, and because you've been putting aside money, the, the two parts you've been putting it aside for, for purposes of investment. And investment means money is not just supposed to sit in your mattress or in your bank and you're supposed to look at it and say, wow, I have a, a, huge, a huge pile of cash. That money is supposed to work for you. You're supposed to give, put it to work. You're, ma you're supposed to make it um, start to earn fruits of labor. And that means whether it's employing someone to do something for you or, or, or running or starting a small business, using that same money, um, it doesn't matter. And I've, I have uh, uh, examples of people who have started small businesses like kerosene, selling kerosene, uh, selling bread, selling vegetables, and from that money they've been able to now, and they're still applying the same principles, that even if you're earning this money, which is your salary, and you've got these other small businesses that are happening, you're still applying the 10-part the, 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 the principles, and you're still, every, every bit of, 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 of revenue that you're getting, you're making sure that you're putting three aside, you're putting three aside, and you're making those, the two work for you, and, and the one, you're making it uh, your savings. Mm. I've done it for, for, for the better part of 10 years, and I promise you, right now, um, a lot of, in fact, when I started my business, a lot of the, the, the capital that went into, into allowing me to, to, to run the business came from um, that discipline, that discipline, and okay. having those three parts of my and of my, definitely of that's a definite uh, recommended book. One can read the richest man in Babylon if you're thinking of uh, you know going into investments and how to live a better financial free life. Because again, one of the things that he mentions in the book is the fact that when you remove that ten percent uh, from your wages and your salary, your life actually doesn't change. You still continue change. living the same life. Absolutely. So one wonders what happens to that ten percent when you don't segment it. Absolutely. And you know we we we. You know, we, we look at our, our expenditure um, in, in different ways, but most people, like you're saying, will think this 15,000, it has to do all of this work, there's, there's not enough, how am I going to do it? It's a mind thing. Mm. It's literally all in your mind. Mm -hmm. If you decide, 
If I have 15,000, I will consciously live off 11. For me, if I earn, it's like tax. You know, the government will tax you, so why not tax yourself? Right. Right? right. Um, if, you, if you know that your, your, gross, your gross paycheck at the end of the month is X, but you know what you're actually taking home mm -hmm. is a certain amount, 30% mm -hmm. less in some instances, then why, why can't you apply the same principles to yourself and mm -hmm. actually um, allow yourself a, a, a small tax, but you know that this tax that I'm charging myself is something that is going to help me in the future? Okay. You've talked continuously about creating value and the fact that people are paid for value. Uh, if you're not bringing value to the table, chances are nobody will employ you because really at the end of the day, uh, they're not paying you to do nothing. How does one quantify value? Because the other thing is, I may have a job which I'm constantly complaining I am not paid enough by my employer, yet I think and feel I'm creating value. How do I quantify that value? Excellent question. And, 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 and there's two ways. Um, it, when you're employed and when you're self-employed or you're an entrepreneur. When you're employed, um, and this is something that many people don't like to hear. Um, there, are, there are ways of getting yourself up the food chain, if you will, climb the corporate ladder. And many people believe that your merit and, your, and, and, and the effort that you put in alone is what will get you there. There are these other intangibles which, which speak to how you relate to your colleagues, how you relate to your, to your boss. Because at the end of the day, you need to be meeting the objectives that the person who is paying you requires right. and, 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 and you're not just meeting those objectives, you need to be visible, you need to be seen to be meeting those objectives. You'll find that a lot of people who do amazing work, they're undervalued because they're not seen. You're not, you're, you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm working in this job but my boss does not appreciate me, doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't care, recognize doesn't recognize what, how, you, how, how do you recognize something that you can't see that you can't hear? Because we've been, we've been, we've been um, um, cultured, cultured mm -hmm. to, to, to lay low and not, not stand out, not want to, not want to see like you're, you're being... Um, you we actually think trying to stand out is a form of pride. Is a form of pride. Yeah. Whereas the people who actually do stand out, and this I'm talking within employment, if you stand out and you seem to be punching above your weight, you seem to be always there, the person who's paying you is recognizing this and is a human being mm -hmm. and is seeing that, you know what, you're actually bringing more value to me. And someone might be doing some amazing work, but they're not seen, they're not heard. Um, and they're not, they're not wowing or, 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 making, or making an impact in their, in their, boss's, in their boss's mind. Mm -hmm. And if you, do not, if you do not combine that being seen and being heard with um, how you relate, and how you relate is, speaks to um, your, your soft skills. And these are, these are things that I'm very passionate about, and these are some of the, 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 the courses that I train. Um, how you relate to your colleagues, to your workers, to your suppliers, to contractors, to third parties, how you build your brand. Because as much as companies and products have brands, you yourself, as a, as, as a worker, as an employee, you have a brand. And if that brand is not easily recognizable, if it's not something that people can, can remember quickly. Or even identify. Or even identify, mm. then you will be forgotten, right? And, and it's important that you, you're able to build your brand as an employee such that your brand starts to pay. And your brand will be, can be built both within your organization or outside. I know that I got, I've, I've received um, employment opportunities by virtue of the fact that my brand spoke on my behalf mm -hmm. without me actually having to apply for to, the job. To apply or for the job. A CV. Exactly, or even give a CV because other people recommended me based on, on the brand that I had built. That is within employment. Now, as an entrepreneur, the same principles apply. However, um, your network and your relationships as an entrepreneur, that is the most critical thing. Um, if you do not have um, people that you can call on uh, and, 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 and get references from and get pointers and people to point you in the right direction because you, you're only one person as an entrepreneur. You need, you need a, a network. network of people. And it's not just a network, it's the strength of that network. And that's why it's very important not to burn bridges. You know, most people get emotional. And this, this again speaks to some of the, the salient issues like emotional intelligence. Mm. People become emotional um, when they're em employed um, forgetting that it's those same, those same people that you probably got emotional with and you burnt a bridge with, you might need them when, the back. When, when, you become, when you're standing on your own and you want a favor or you want someone to, to point you in the right direction. So having the emotional intelligence and not being um, too overwhelmed by lack of opportunity, cultivating your networks and not being overwhelmed by lack of opportunity, I think those are the things that you really need to, to, to harness well, as an entrepreneur. Okay, now you've talked about the soft skills and ensuring that uh, you relate in a certain way that, so that you're recognized, but there are those who have the mentality that I've come to work. 
I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here really for a social thing. I'm here to work, so I'll deliver. What, what's your comments to that? Oh, yeah, I, and, and, and that, that is, uh, I don't call it a mistake. Um, it's, it's something that we, we, we should start to correct um, if we want to be successful. Um, as much as you've come to work, we spend, most people spend about 80% of their time working. The other 20% is where you go home and you're with your family and so on. So if you're going to spend 80% of your time engaged in that, environment. in that environment, you have to make the most of it, right? And, and, and making the most of it means that even though you, you're, you're here to, to, to do the job that your, your job description has, has told you you need to do, again, if it's not seen and heard by the powers that be, by the people who are in charge of making the decision as to whether you get promoted, whether you get a raise, whether or not you, are, you, you, become, you become the next uh, CFO or whatever it is. If those people are not aware of the work that you're doing, it, it counts for nothing, mm. right? Um, and there's different ways of getting them, of getting them aware, recognize. number one. Number two, um, your brand. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not able to cultivate a brand, and a brand is not built independently, it's built through the, net, the people within your, your organization and the people who you will be selling to, your customers. They need to be able to feel that this is someone who they can relate to. And you know, your brand can have meetings on your behalf. Right. And so you, you, it's, it's like being everywhere at the same time, mm -hmm. but not necessarily um, doing that. And so for the, for the people who, want to, who, who say that it's all about the work that I put in, I say go a, a little bit normal. beyond that. Absolutely. All right, we'll have to wind it up right there because of time. Mwenesi Musalia, thank you very much, uh, an image consultant. Also, um, well, a financial advisor. And uh, thank you very much. He's from House of Major. Thank you very much for uh, giving us your time this morning. Thank you. Man. And, uh, well, that's where we're going to have to wind up Morning Express this morning. Thank you so very much for keeping us company. Do stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, it's time for World View. Do stay with us and uh, find out what's happening around the world right here on KTN News.